Hey guys, it's Amanda. It's no secret that we communicate in many ways, verbal, written, our body language. So if you're visiting somewhere new, it's very easy to get caught out and do something you shouldn't do, even though you didn't know you shouldn't do it, if that made sense. No. So for instance, in the US, the middle finger is very offensive, or here in England, the backwards peace sign isn't what you might think and can get you into trouble. I can't even begin to imagine how many of these gestures exist within different cultures and different countries. So it'd be impossible to know and remember them all. But I find them really interesting. So today we are looking at 16 gestures that can get you into trouble abroad. But before we begin, what is a gesture that you've done or you've heard of or seen someone do that could get you in trouble? Put it in the comments. Oh, you're dining in Paris with a full belly of French onion soup and a mouthful of double chocolate souffle. <laughs> okay, enough of that bad accent. The waiter approaches asking how your meal was, and mouth full, you give a satisfied expression and make the A-OK -okay gesture. You expect to see happiness on the waiter's face, but he looks at you with irritation. Hmm. Well, it turns out that making a circle with your index finger and thumb does not mean okay in certain countries. In France, it means zero or worthless. Instead of praising the delicious food, you called it worthless. Oops. In Venezuela, Turkey, and Brazil, it's a hand gesture you shouldn't use either. In these countries, this is a sign that will offend pretty much anyone you flash it at. Enough said. Just give them your biggest I honestly, I've never heard it being being used for that. Like usually, like, I mean, I don't use that much. Anyway, but it'd be like, that's a A-OK. -okay. So I'm glad I know that because that would be horrible. I mean, could you imagine someone being like, so how's your food? And you're like, zero. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I would feel so awful. No wonder they get upset. And I wonder what it means in those other countries because he didn't elaborate on that, did he? Smile and wait till you finish what's in your mouth to give your proper thanks. All over the world, giving a thumbs up is seen as a positive thing. Yeah. It's an expression of your liking towards something that everything is good. In parts of Italy, West Africa, Iran, and Greece, though, it carries a stigma as an incredibly offensive gesture. When visiting Malaysia, you use this digit to point at things. So next time you're trying to hitchhike in these countries, you should reconsider sticking your thumb out for a ride. You might never get picked up. Trying to order two of anything or... Hmm. Didn't really say exactly what it means in Italy, Iran, etc. So I'm assuming it maybe means like stick it where the sun don't shine, maybe, or some equivalent of that. After hearing about the first two, I think it's just best to avoid hand gestures altogether because... You're bound to offend someone without even realizing it. Showing someone the peace sign in the UK, Australia, or New Zealand is fine, as long as you don't have your hand the wrong way. <laughs> Do this gesture wrong, and you're giving a very yeah. offensive hand signal, <laughs> I which did know isn't that going one. to win you many friends. So make sure that when you have your index and middle fingers pointed up in the V-shape, your palm is facing outwards, and you'll have a great time, mate. Bowing is used a lot in East Asian cultures to greet each other and guests. Yeah. The deeper the bow is, the more respect you are being given. Fortunately, most Japanese don't expect foreigners to understand the bowing etiquette right away. They'll generally also accept a handshake or a nod. But being familiar and practicing your bowing etiquette before going to Japan will impress all the locals. How low can you go? <laughs> Using your index fingers is considered impolite in several European, Latin American, and African nations. It's particularly rude in China, Japan, and Indonesia when pointing at a person. The gesture might be taken as you singling someone out to blame or insult them. If you ask for directions in the Philippines, you might be left scratching your head, wondering where they're pointing. Don't be alarmed. The locals use their lips instead of raising their hands. When in doubt, wherever huh. you are in the world, just gesture toward a person or place using your entire hand. You might think that sticking your... Pointing in any country is rude, I think. I and mean, that's the way that I was brought up. It was always, don't stare. 
and don't point because it is rude, I think. Um, but yeah, I didn't know the whole lips thing though. So if it was like, oh, it's that way. See, I think it's brilliant. I love that. I never would have known that if it wasn't for this video, which I'm hoping that this is true and it's not made up. Because I love learning about this stuff. I think it's fascinating. Pinky finger out makes you look fancy. But in China, it's frowned upon. This gesture is the same as giving a thumbs down and meaning that something is making you unhappy. When taking photos with others, you want to be respectful and don't want to make any obscene hand gestures. Two gestures to avoid, in particular, are sticking up only your pinky finger and pointing at something with a dirty object, like a used fork or a chopstick. Now, it's fun to eat uh -oh. with chopsticks, but you might accidentally cause offense if you put them down the wrong way. When you're in China, South Korea, or Japan, don't make the mistake of sticking your chopsticks upright in a bowl of rice. This is considered bad luck. Oops. If you have to put your chopsticks down, simply place them on the side or across the bowl instead. Likewise, when eating in South Korea or China, don't ask someone to pass you some food. In these countries, you have to join in the action and grab what food you desire. And you're not going to offend anyone if you take that last bite either. In some places, it's acceptable to blow. So, my chopstick skills are improving a bit. It's, and th that one, to be fair, it's kind of like, because I mentioned obviously not putting them straight up. But I think that's kind of similar to the etiquette here in the terms of, I think when you're finished with your plate, you're supposed to put your, you know, all your silverware on the plate facing facing down. I can't remember. And then they'll plate to like show that you're done. Like you don't just shove, put them off to the side or anything. And as for passing food, Brits and Americans will be in trouble with this one. Both of us say that during meals with family or friends because it seems to be rude to lean over someone to grab what you want. Or, you know what I mean? Or to put your to put your arm over and just grab a bowl or a plate or whatever you want. Yeah, that one that one's massively different as well. But it just goes to show, you need to do your research before you visit places because you don't want to offend someone just because what's rude to you isn't always rude to everyone else and vice versa. Blow your nose while at the dinner table. Not all of us are even prepared for the sudden trickle of the nose. But as long as you excuse yourself and turn away, everything is okay. <laughs> Except if you're vacationing in Japan, China, or South Korea, where the chilies can make your nose runny very quickly. So never blow your nose in public. If you must clear your nostrils, consider leaving the table and blowing your nose in the restroom or hiding away from any other observers while being quiet. Huh. It's considered rude and unhygienic to the people around you. Always use a paper tissue, not a handkerchief, and throw it away after use. Fiji is one of the top destinations in the world. Beautiful beaches and friendly people. Spending your vacation on this island, you're bound to meet a few local Fijians that'll want to shake your hand for a very long time. It's customary to hold your hand for the entire time that you're exchanging greetings, oh, wow. no matter how long. You should also make sure not to pull away too quickly. It's considered very rude if you end the handshake abruptly. If you are in India, you put your hands together instead of shaking a person's hand. Holding your hands in a prayer formation, tilt your head down slightly and greet the person with namaste with your hands close to your chest. Crossing your arms means nothing in most countries. Mm. Maybe you're I mean, cold, a bit like standoffish. Or it just feels more comfortable. In Finland, though, it's likely to send the wrong kind of message. Having your arms crossed means major disrespect. Finnish people see this as a sign of arrogance and defiance. It's done mainly to tell the people around you that you're looking for trouble. Yikes. This body language will be taken as a dare, so you're likely to be confronted if you do it. Specifically, avoid crossing your arms at people directly. You don't want to cause any trouble if you're over there on holiday. It might be tempting to shake hands with a person as soon as you meet them in Russia. But if it's in a doorway, forget about it. It's not the end of the oh. world if you forget this simple rule. But some Russian people consider it to be very unlucky. 
step all the way through the doorway before you extend your hand for a handshake. This goes for restaurants, homes, shops, and just about anywhere else you can think of with a doorway. Avoid this simple mistake and you'll save yourself some trouble and bad luck. Huh. The head is the most sacred part of the body in Thailand, so patting anyone on the head can be seen as a serious offense. In the United States, Patting or ruffling someone's hair is meant to be playful yeah, or kids. even an indication that someone's done a good job. But in Thailand, it's best to keep your hands away from other people's heads to avoid disrespecting or making them feel unclean. It's also wise to not point with your toes as feet are considered the dirtiest part of the body. Well, on holiday, the last thing you want to be doing is insulting people. Looking at your watch in the middle of a conversation can be considered extremely rude in the Middle East. It looks like you're in a hurry to get away from the person you're talking to. Even if you've got an appointment for something, you don't want to be rude. Let the conversation run its natural course before checking the time. In er Again, I think that one is, or should be, rude everywhere. Because it's kind of, you know, if someone's talking to you and you're just constantly... It's like what they're saying isn't really important. You don't want to be there. You're just ready to leave. And that's not very nice, is it? But culture, once communication has started, it must take its time. <laughs> Get it? Don't ever use the palm out, fingers up, stop gesture in Greece. You might not like the outcome if you do this to a local. This gesture is a huge insult to Greeks, a stigma that dates back to the Byzantine times. Likewise, in South Korea, don't hail a cab or wave someone over to you with your palm facing up. If you do, you might be stuck there for hours. Waving your hand like that is how Koreans summon their dogs. The proper way to wave is to stick your arm out while having your palm facing down and moving your head up and down vertically. This isn't the only thing to keep in mind in South Korea. If someone older than you offers a drink, the proper etiquette is to receive it with both hands and then turn your head away as you take the first sip. It's a show of respect, and respecting one's elders is taken very seriously in South Korea. To be fair, most people probably wouldn't know those gestures meant anything negative unless they've traveled to these places and experienced it. Except for maybe like blowing your nose at the table or pointing at people. I mean, I feel like they're rude no matter where you live, but maybe that's just me. And after watching this, the only real way to make sure you're not causing offense or being rude to different cultures is by asking the locals when you arrive or doing research beforehand. I mean, that's the brilliant thing about the internet. You can learn pretty much everything you need to know before you travel. Because I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to get caught out traveling. Like, it's just embarrassing. And I never like to come off like I'm being rude. Ever. Because why would you want to? I mean, you're visiting their country. Just respect that fact. I think it's the same when people visit here in England. You know, wherever you're visiting. Respect people that live there. And But on that note, are all of these things true? I haven't got a clue. Not a Scooby. So, has anyone visited these countries? Can you confirm or deny? Also, what gestures would you add to the list? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button if that's what you're into. And I'll see you in the next video.